What's up everyone, since everybody liked the pocket color grading tutorial so much, I'm going to do the same thing and show you the quickest and easiest way how to color grade Apple iPhone log footage. First start off by airdropping all your footage from your iPhone to your Mac, then open CapCut, and I'm going to use CapCut because it's just quick and easy and free so everybody can follow along. But the same principles apply in every editing software so you can follow along no matter what, in Premiere or Final Cut or whatever you want. So open your software, open CapCut, then here you will probably end up in media. You just need to press import. After you selected the correct clips and pressed open, you will end up here. Now you can just drag and drop all of them at once into your timeline or just select the ones you want to color grade for now. So I'm going to use this one, that one, and this one, and then drag and drop into your timeline. Now the next step would be to first make your window bigger. You can just drag and drop this line and also this one. Then you see more what you're doing. Then, if since we're already adjusting this, go to these three lines and turn on color audience scope and press show for now. This will help us color grading a little bit. It makes the window smaller, but it will help us a little bit. You can go like this. And yeah, don't worry, it looks over complicated, but I will explain it very simple. Then go to adjustment and LUT should be selected. And now you probably need to go to the link in the description, download the official Apple Log LUT or mine. You can get mine on Etsy if you want. It looks more filmic, but I will show you the difference. And yeah, you can follow along with any LUT you have, you already have, or you download. Just make sure it's made specifically for Apple Log, otherwise it probably will, will look very wrong. But yeah, get mine or download the free one. Also, if the official Apple link doesn't work, let me know and I will give a Google Drive link. Because for some reason, Apple makes it really difficult to download the free official Apple LUT. And they hide it somewhere in a developer site that doesn't really load half the time. But yeah, that's a different story. Now you can go to import and then select the LUT that you just downloaded, however many. If it's just one, it's just one. Then import. Now you can see them here. Don't worry about the colors in this preview. It's kind of all over the place. But from now on, you have the benefit. Every time you use CapCut, you don't have to import those again. They are saved in CapCut. And yeah, I'm going to show you what to do next, which is add adjustment plus so now you have an adjustment layer you can drag it and make it as long as possible it doesn't really matter for now just make it longer than your videos and quickly explain what is the adjustment layer doing we can apply stuff to the adjustment layer so we don't have to do it for each individual clip with one or three it doesn't really matter but if you have hundreds in a big video doing everything for every single clip is very difficult and like this, all three, for example, are affected by this, which is why we can go now to the right here under LUT when we have the adjustment layer still selected and choose the, the LUT. And here, really quickly, the difference. I'm going to show you this is with mine. And this is with the official Apple one. You can see it looks very similar to the normal Apple footage just with more dynamic range and uh, less sharpening. And then here looks pretty nice. This one I feel like looks the most like the standard iPhone colors. And this one kind of gets messed up. I'm going to show you later how to fix it, but yeah, it just shows you even the official LUT is not always correct. Depends on the white balance, the color cast, what's in the frame and so on. And yeah, now back to mine. Also, you can see mine has much less contrast. It depends. Some LUTs do a ton of stuff, others do very little changes. And for example, if the LUT itself has less contrast, you can do more in both. And if it has too much, for example, you could change the intensity. With mine and with most good ones, I would say you should leave it at 100 most of the time. Now, what do you do in color grading itself? You Now we have the LUT in the adjustment layer but we don't want to change with that. Now we want to do each individual clip because each one is different. Uh, has different light, a different sus subjects and stuff. So now we select the first clip. And now we are here in video basic, but we want to go to adjustment. Now it has auto, but, and it's a pro feature, so you have to pay, but even I would never recommend it because it just looks too, I don't know, over the top. So scroll down to adjust. And by the way, ignore this slot here because we already applied it with the adjustment layer. If you do it again here, it will just be all over the place because it's technically applied twice. So just ignore this. You can uncheck or check. It doesn't really matter. By the way, if you ever mess up something, for example, you do it by accident, you can just press this button to reset. And yeah, 
now adjustment like I said. So you you sort of need to train your eyes what looks good and what's wrong with this picture, how to fix it. Because the faster you can spot what's wrong, the faster you can fix it. And that's why we um we show this. Ignore the circle for one. I will explain this in a future video. But with these two, basically what it does, I can show you with exposure first. If everything is too dark, everything gets smushed in the bottom. If everything is too bright, everything gets smushed in the top. Then let's reset this one again. And for example, contrast. Here everything is sort of in the middle, so it doesn't go low or high enough. And for example, if you do the contrast to the max, everything is way too high and way too low at the same time. That's why it looks so crazy. And like this, you can sort of train your eyes to know what are those sliders doing to the footage. For example, highlights up, moves all the highlights, all the bright stuff like the sky or the shiny parts of the skin and the roof and so on, up. And then if you go down, it lowers it. And you want it always as balanced as possible. The more balanced it looks here, the better it looks usually in the picture. Of course, there are extremes. For example, if the sun would be here, then... Of course, the sun would be overexposed because you can never expose the sun perfectly while also everything else. But this is what you see here. Because if you go to the different clips, you can see here, for example, a lot of bright stuff with the sky, a lot of very dark stuff with the shadow. So that's why a lot of it is in the top, a lot of it is in the bottom. Or here, more balanced. Here, everything is sort of bright, so everything is all over the place. But yeah, I'm going to show you with the first clip what I would do. So you press again the first clip, always select the one you want to work on. Now we are back here. And now with this one, for example, it looks like sort of low contrast because that's also a result of my lot. So I probably up the contrast to a little bit so it looks natural. Then it's still, I think, not dark enough for my taste. But taste is also a big thing. Some people hate it when something is super contrasty, other people love it. So Sort of keep it normal and keep it keep the the scopes in mind and make them balance, but at the same time go with what you like and experiment. Then with this one, maybe the highlights a little bit tiny bit up. If the slider always jumps from one to five or something, you can also use this plus or minus or up and down. Maybe highlights like this. Then I would still the shadows maybe a little bit down. The blacks in this case maybe only one or two down and the brilliance in a lot of uh, indoor shoots i feel like brilliance is the one in CapCut that helps iphone footage the most in outdoor it highly depends but it just brings everything down because the it's basically like mid tones in other programs if you are familiar but basically the, the iphone overexposes and brightens everything up to make everything as bright and colorful as possible which looks usually good on the phone screen but pretty bad on a bigger screen so the mid-tones are a lot of times very helpful if you lower them maybe in this case a little bit in a lot of other videos i lower this quite a lot just play around by clip and maybe this is already good you can play it a little bit and yeah looks pretty good by the way while editing you can also mute the video here if the sound is annoying and later uncheck it so you have the sound when exporting if you want it then the next clip i'm going to show you here it's pretty simple. Here is also a big thing of taste, how much of this part you want to see. For example, if you up the brilliance, you can see sort of everything. But the more you see, the more it looks sort of fake, computer generated or phone-like, because our eyes also cannot see the brightest and darkest uh, spots at the same time. That's also why a lot of movies have like very dark and very bright areas in the same shot. So in this case, I would just again up the contrast. And when there are no people in the shot, a lot of times you can get away with saturation. So I would also up the saturation to make maybe the here the green in the trees and here the colorful petals of the sun, make it a little bit more saturated. And that's for this clip basically it. You could try it, experiment, maybe the up the whites a tiny little bit. And yeah, that's basically it for that clip. And then with the next one, I would again up the contrast. And you could almost leave it like this. Depends. Maybe brilliance again. A little bit down. Blacks also a little bit down. Maybe again like three or something. And shadows also. And you just sort of 
use this as reference. Of course, the sky and the really bright parts of the skin will always be a little overexposed because, for example, if you lower it, you can see it also gets sort of boring. So just use it as a reference. And uh, yeah, that's basically, the, for example, if there is a shot with, like here with a motor or here, and the skin gets too crazy, you can also dial down the saturation and play around like this. Or for example, uh, I'm going to show you really quick. It will not look 100%, but for example, in the epilogue, like I said, it sort of messes it up completely. You could instead uh, select the clip again, dial down the saturation maybe, and also dial down the intensity of the LUT and sort of find a way until it looks good. For example, you could also get it because it looks sort of in this violet or whatever it's called in English, maybe magenta, uh, maybe shift it more to the green and sort of like this, find a balanced color that, that fits. And it's just basically a balancing game. Those here, sharp clarity, particles and fade and vignette, you almost never need. So for this basic tutorial, I will leave it at this, go back to how it looked with mine. And the last part, you can use the up and down arrow to just jump from one clip to the next. So jump at the end and then press Command B or select the adjustment layer first, Command B to cut it. Now you know for a fact that at the end, it's right to the end. Otherwise, you might have one or two frames that are not color graded at the end, which will look very weird for the people watching. We can, for example, turn off the, the scopes one more time. Watch a little bit. Here looks pretty good. But just some normal daylight, I would say. Then also here, I like this one a lot. I think somewhere, yeah, person walks past. Looks very cinematic, I feel like, with the shadows here. And this one also. Very lucky here with the bird flying through. And yeah, if it's too, if you don't like the green so much, you can also adjust the greens or just make the blue more intense. But that's maybe for another video. So you have the basics. You, if you turn on the oleoscopes, you use them as a rough reference, you experiment what looks how, and you just go back and forth, flowing and upping a little bit until you find a balanced way of yeah, how it looks. And then really quickly the export, which is here in the top right. But first I'm gonna turn back on the audio. If you have audio in your video, don't forget it. After color grading, then press export. Now you can name it whatever you want. And then choose the folder. Watermark I leave off all the time. Then here on the video. Uh, YouTube usually 4K for Instagram 180. Here is the same thing for Instagram recommended and for YouTube higher because Instagram cannot handle too much quality. Codec I always leave. H264, format or sleeve morph, frame rate is important. Whatever you have set in your camera, you should also set here. For this, I had my camera on 25, so you have to choose it. And if this, the current frame rate is in the same as that of the project, changing it may affect your video quality. If this sentence shows up, you know it's the correct one. I would phrase this sentence probably a little bit easier to understand, but it basically means it's the correct one because. If your video is 25 and you export it in 30 or whatever, then there are frames missing, so it might look choppy or weird. And also you don't really ever need 50 or 60, it's just for slow motion. If you change nothing else besides uh, the frame rate, 25 to 50, 50 will never look better. So just keep that in mind, but that's also a topic for another video. When you have all your settings, then here you see the duration, how long it would take to render, the size, and yeah, that's basically it. Then just press export. And like I said, if you want, you can check out my lot on Etsy, or you can just download the official Apple one, or you can just find whatever lot you prefer. There are tons of free ones and tons of paid ones, very expensive and very cheap ones. So figure out what you like. And yeah, if you want to support me, you can get mine or just subscribe. And in the last video, I answered all the comments. So if you have any questions or you need help with this, then just let me know. And yeah, thanks.